you linked with French Montana and and did I want to say at least one record, maybe more with him. How did how did that happen? Um. So pretty much like how it, I think it works in any circumstances is like you got to know somebody that knows somebody, right? Because I was looking through your Twitter and I also see like the same situations where like people are having this hard time of just because, you know, since when, since 2010, the, the amount of producers that have been, you know, coming out since the past 10 years or, or longer like everybody just fighting for that that placement or like just sending out emails of beats to this produce I mean this artist, this artist, not knowing like if it's the right email or not, but it might be an expired old email. So it's like you get lost in the shuffle, right? So I feel like I think we're gonna touch up on this later on as well, but the best way is like you know somebody that knows them, right? So that's how it happened is that I, I had a, a mutual friend that knew Chinks and knew French. So he heard of my production and then he kind of, you know, showed them my work. And then that's how uh, Chinks and French reached out, you know, it's telling them to send them like a folder full of beats. Like, you know, and I, I'm in talk with French even to like today, you know what I mean? So we're still working, you know what I mean? So... That, that's how that happened. Just knowing somebody that knows them. And at at that time when you were working with, with French Montana, was there a big Punjabi rap scene in, in Toronto? Nah, man. Nah. I would say this this whole vibe where genre started, I would say about three, four years ago. Yeah, I would say like 2015, 2016 is like when this you know, this this style of Punjabi hip-hop in, in Canada, st- like, really, like, made noise. You know what I mean? So so around that time, were you working with a lot of unsigned artists or were you mostly focused on, on major placements and, and breaking into the, um, the United States uh, music scene? Um... Yeah, I mean, the thing that I feel like worked, the, like did work the best for me was uh, having your home, your own like homegrown team, right? So I always had my boy or or like uh, Sonny Malton. He's also a rapper, part of Brown Boys. You know, we 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 run Brown Boys together, and uh, I linked up with him pretty early on. I would say, yeah, we linked up probably around 2005, 2006, something like that. So I feel like that's like the main, the main thing is just having like a solid team that like you stick by and you delegate, delegate certain things for them to take care of or or whatnot. Right. So I was definitely more focused, like after realizing that like, after French Montana, like I had a couple other placements, but I, I found that it was more difficult to like reach out to these artists or get to them just because they're in a different country or maybe I don't have the direct link to them. You know what I mean? So it makes it difficult because like I said earlier, like everybody I think is pretty much just making beats and just sending like emails probably like every five minutes, like of beats to this artist, that artist, not like I said, not knowing if the, it's the right email or, or whatnot, whatnot, right? So I felt like the once once I realized that, like, yo, this is not going to really work. Just, you know, like trying to get being being heard or whatnot, right? So it's, it's better to have your own team and kind of build from, like, the ground up. You know what I mean? So have having Sunny rap on my beats, doing videos ourselves, YouTube is there. Like, you have all the necessary, like, the necessary tools for you to get heard and be heard. So everything's at your disposal. It's just you got to kind of have a ear for it and know like what kind of like what the people want or what kind of what are they looking for and try to give them that. 